Hey guys, on the 7th of November, this Sunday, we're doing a release on the BankySpec.com website. Go check it out this Sunday, 12 p.m. noon. The new merch is gonna go live, so go check it out. Today, we're gonna be working on some of the behind the scenes stuff and of course, the Falcon. We're gonna run down some of the issues that came about after the uh, drift event that we took the AU to. So we're gonna get those sorted. So a few days ago, we took some photos of the merch, had a really good time. It was a nice sunset. We're actually doing more than just a hoodie and t-shirt release. There's gonna be new stickers, there's gonna be car banners as well. We do have to get a couple more photos for the store. We need to get the, the sample images. I'll show you how I do that. It's, it's very, uh, very low, low cost production, but it does the job. Let's take some photos. So we are done with the photo shoot now and make sure you don't forget 7th of November, this Sunday release is happening. Oh man. Chaser needs some work too. I'm gonna to pull the AU up around and uh, we're gonna go show you exactly what went wrong with it. And I'm also gonna probably take out the seat. Sorry for the overexposure here. We're gonna probably take out the seat to see if we can fit this seat in that I got from Cody. And um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I look like such an idiot walking out here with the GoPro on my head. Just gonna do a quick check. <laughs> There's no one here, sick, sick. Gonna bring the AU up on the driveway because yeah, it's just gonna be easier instead of, you know, being out, I don't know, around here, trying to move around the car because you know, car's gonna go past. But yeah, when you talk about the problems that uh, occurred with having this thing at full send. <sighs> There is still like a little bit of a dank smell. I don't know. It's it's like damp, but it's not the worst thing in the world and for sure it's getting better. There was some peculiar sounds coming from the engine on full send. Oh, don't mind the diff. And I don't know what it was. Nathan thinks it was like a stuck lifter or something like that. I have no idea, but yeah, it was making some weird top end noises because it was definitely not bottom, bottom end, otherwise you would have heard it with, you know, the increase in RPM. I don't know, it wasn't the best sort of sound, so yeah. Oof. I also need to get the AC re in this thing because it doesn't have any AC right now. And what that means is like when it's like a 35 degree day. Yeah, when it's like a 35 degree day, it's gonna be crap to drive to the track and stuff. It also means like when it's raining and it's wet, I don't have anything to demist the windows. Oh, Naki owes me a bonnet strut. I need to get that off him. Don't have anything to hold this thing up. But yeah, let's talk about the issues with this thing. We're gonna keep GoPro mode on because you guys seem to really like it when I'm walking around explaining stuff with my GoPro on my head. Uh, I need to give you guys a quick update on this too. Later in the day, we're gonna have Turbo Tristan come around and give me some lines and sort of work around how to install the fuel pressure regulator and flex fuel sensor. So this is all gonna be updated very soon and hopefully we can get the front end fuel stuff done so we can start on the back end and finally get this thing in the dyno. Like all this stuff, I don't even know what I'm doing. Fuel pressure regulator right here. Turbo Smart 800, don't even know what that means. Oh, my jack is not in my, oh, my jack is in Nathan's car. The GoPro was doing a pretty bad job of filming underneath the engine. So let's start off with problem number one. So our first problem was the power steering. So we need to address this issue, but it was boiling over every time that we were sending the car. It's a pretty common problem to know that AU Falcons and every other Falcon that's ever scraped the earth has power steering problems. And that is no exception, of course, with the AU. Both Naki and I, you know, we weren't entirely going crazy, crazy hard, but we both experienced steering fluid boil over. So the steering wheel was coming out onto the exhaust manifold and I'm not too sure if that's actually like flammable or anything. So it's pretty good that nothing happened that was bad. We did have some water. So, you know, if anything did catch fire, we could have put it out, but, but we're gonna have to get a power steering cooler. Don't know where we're gonna mount it yet, but apparently that really solves the problem because I don't wanna have any problems with the power steering. You, you, you don't want that. You wanna, you wanna be able to have some nice easy movement with your hands. Hopefully that should be an easy fix. The power steering racks are also known to go on these things and I believe it's probably because of the power steering pump because they, you know, get hot and boil over and the fluid comes out, the power steering probably runs dry and that's where you get your problem. So hopefully having the power steering cooler there, it prevents all of that from happening and we can have a good time on track next time. The next issue that we faced with this thing was the coolant. Now I know exactly what we're gonna do because this is just, <laughs> triggering me so much. We've got some milkshake coolant going on and we've flushed this thing so many times now. It's literally like brown. I don't know if the camera's gonna pick that up, but it's it's brown. And every time that we flush this thing, get some nice green coolant in there, within like a couple cycles, the coolant is back to brown. So I've spent probably like $100 trying to get the coolant sort of fixed. The only option from here now is probably to replace the radiator because I believe there's just a massive amount of stuff built up in the radiator that's just making this thing turn to chocolate every time we run this thing. So <laughs> I'm sick of spending money on coolant. We're just gonna buy a new radiator. So 
maybe, just maybe, we might be able to get this seat in today. Uh, I don't know if it's going to work, but it looks like these rails might bolt up to this seat. I, I don't know yet. I need to take this seat apart. But the way that this seat holds onto the rail is uh, one bolt there, one bolt there, one bolt there, one bolt there. Then the rail should pop off and then we might be able to locate it and place the same bolts. And we might be able to bolt this seat on as there's also four bolts in four spots. So fingers crossed, then we could just transfer the seats over. Knowing my luck, it's definitely not gonna be that simple, but we're gonna give it a go. Fuck it. If I could have a seat installed today, that would be pretty sick. I chucked the seat on the standard rail and I reckon I could get it to work potentially. The only issue is that like if I do this and I, I try to make it work, I'm gonna have to chop some stuff and I just don't wanna brick my car for like a week until I can get like the part. Like I do dr drive the AU around quite a bit. So I'm gonna put the seat rail and seat in the car and see, see where I sit as a driver and maybe if it like lines up really well, then I'll consider it and I'll just send it, but I just don't even know what it's gonna line up like right now. So I'll chuck the seat in and see what happens. Yeah, look, that ain't gonna work. That's this, yeah, dang it. I only learn from mistakes like this. <laughs> so, ah. Oh. I decided to just chuck everything back in and have another go. You just saw me hammering like some seat rail stuff. I think I can get this seat in. I don't know, man. Look like, have a sus, have a look how close this is. Like, you see, I just need to drill a hole right there. This hole like basically lines up, maybe like a little bit more ovaling out and we can get that all sorted. This one over here is pretty good, just needs to be ovaled out again, ovaled out a bit. And this one right here, yeah, same thing. We just need to oval all these holes out essentially. And like, if we do that, we should be able to bolt it all up, get the seed in. So I reckon, I reckon we can get the seed in today. If I really, really try. in everything's yeah, installed and it's pretty impressive considering this seat rail is not made for the car at all have a sus it's all in here oh right, daniel come here we got daniel here too i mean drake i mean daniel i mean drake i mean drake i mean drake i mean i mean drake <laughs> can you pull on this sleeve right here yes yeah, sure no worries buddy thanks buddy no thanks worries. buddy boy no worries man champ go, chief chief there you go uh, you, now you gotta pull it up like yeah, and no, I haven't done it yet. Oh, why? Ready? Yeah. Now do it again. Now do it again. Keep it there. Yeah. Oh fuck. Oh, why wouldn't it go? Yeah. Pull, pull, push, push. Oh. Fuck. Oh fuck. <laughs> <laughs> nah, it works. It works there, yeah. Yeah. Look. Look at this. <laughs> fuck. <laughs> Quick little update. Yeah, I couldn't be bothered working on this thing. I sort of just, yeah, put. I don't know. You can see. We didn't get the seat in, unfortunately. We had everything apart, and I just couldn't be bothered drilling the holes, but we will get it in, I promise. So I did sort of give up, but it'll probably go in later today's video. We've also got a special guest here, Turbo Tristan. If you don't know him, you, you might've seen him very briefly on uh, one of my videos before at the at the junkyard. In, uh, in 20 seconds or less, reckon you could tell us your name and what you do. So my name's Tristan, AKA Turbo Tristan. I muck around with turboing pretty much everything on my own YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> on my own YouTube. <laughs> YouTube channel, Turbo yeah. Tristan. Do a lot of Honda stuff. Not really a Honda guy, but I sort of fell into it. Had Nissans, GDRs, every model, Sylvia. Been mucking around with cars for about 20 years. All I can afford are Hondas now, <laughs> so I'm playing with them. Yeah, everything's everything's super expensive now, isn't it? Big time, big yeah, time. Yeah, and Tristan's also brought us some goods as well. What have you, what have you bought us today, dude? Um, so we got some Raceworks fittings and yes. some Raceworks hose. The Raceworks goodies from the guys over at Quick Bits, right? The place that you suggested for me to go last time. Quick bits. There we go. I brought my eBay uh, spanners for AN fittings. You're very into the, the eBay sort of builds, aren't you? Yeah, eBay's yeah, good. It is. Just because it's from eBay doesn't always mean <laughs> it's bad, but yep. you just got to be careful. I have been stung. Yeah, for sure. I brought over some vice grips. These go in the vice. They're also from Raceworks. And basically, 
hold your fittings in there so that they don't get damaged up. Sick. And I brought the plastic ones as well for extra bling factor. <laughs> so we don't scratch anything. The 85 push lock hose. If we need any extra, we can do that. So one of the biggest things that I've been struggling with with this whole build, I keep like telling Tristan, like, I sort of know what I'm doing. You probably like get that I sort of know what to do, but it's just like, it's intimidating because we're dealing with fuel here. So I don't want to mess this up. So that's why I've got you around because any like, I don't want to mess up. Anything that explodes is always yes. intimidating the first few times <laughs> yeah. you play with it. I don't, I just, yeah, putting all the lines and fittings on, it's intimidating, man. So, I don't know, you're the expert, so we've got you here. A lot of pressure. We're just now removing the uh, return line, the, 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 what do you call it, the rubber return line, the rubber bit of it. Oh, look, Tristan's is fisting my engine bay. <laughs> he's, got a, he's got his hand right down in there. And we've decided that we're going to bypass the metal fuel line uh, return line because I don't know it's just going to make it easier we're not going to have to mess around with any flaring of any metal bits it's just going to be easy with a barb tool this barb fitting oh shit this barb fitting this thing will get the work done is a flex fuel sensor you're a Haltech guy aren't you uh, I do have a Haltech <laughs> yes uh, so that's already got the piece on there yep which I I try to take I try to put a line bit on and I couldn't take that bit off so I just kept that on there yep that's fair enough so yep. these are just a matter of Pinching that in and out. Yeah. We've got to sort of put these on now to make sure we have enough room for hose and for fittings. And because this is after the pressure, there's low pressure in here. And the reason why we put this after is because there is a small restriction in there where it passes through the sensor and, and oh, reads how much okay. ethanol content is in there. Yeah. If you put it in front of the fuel going in, there's a restriction fuel going in, so that your injectors are going to be able to flow less. Damn, because I thought originally, yeah, you would put it before because it like makes sense, right? Like you literally want to see the fuel going into your inj engine and injectors, but like it, it like warped with my head a little bit. Exactly. The other so way. the quicker you can get the fuel from the tank to the engine, yeah. and then it's like, yes, we're now on E85, and it'll switch everything over, and then it'll tell the ECU you're running E85 and make all the changes once the fuel pressure starts to build your rising rate regulator is going to pump the fuel pressure up and then it's going to sort of bottleneck in there you can sort of see in there there's a little time oh i can see yeah yeah just to stick to get the the reading right yeah yeah so you have that afterwards yeah it's still going to pressurize the rail still going to pressurize the injectors and then any extra is going to come off and bleed through this through the regulator through this and then back to the tank so it's still it's literally a split second delay so mm -hmm. it's not going to affect the reading or the ECU, but it's gonna help you get more flow to your injectors. And it is still like accurately seeing what's the, what the engine's getting because it's literally just coming straight out of the That's rail. just come from yep. the engine, so it knows Sick. exactly what it's getting. Oh man, yeah, that makes way more sense now. So Tristan's now, um, he's taken off one of the bungs that was in the Turbo Smart 800 and he's replacing it and putting it on, one, which side did you put it on? So I just put it on the out of the way side, yeah. so or the back side towards the firewall. Figured this will work best on the chaser. So if you're coming out of the rail into the front of here, we're going to put our gauge here. So when we're looking over the engine bay, we can see the gauge yep. and adjust the fuel pressure from the top steering right of the gauge. And then the bottom one is going to be the fuel return back to the tank. So we're going to put the bottom fitting there. Sick. Yeah. Really guys. simple. But there was no instructions we could find online. It was a bit of head scratching. Yeah. Figured it out. This is what we're going with. It's weird because like in the box it came with instructions. It was like, well, it didn't come with instructions. It said, go to this this link right here to find the instructions. And didn't help at all. Ones, if anybody's wondering, this is just some high performance thread sealant. It's not Loctite, even though it's from the same company, but it's to fuel and stuff getting out. So it's not to lock it in so it won't come undone, it's to stop the fuel getting out. The way the fitting is in here, you'll never get it all the way in. If you try, you'll end up stripping the thread because everything's aluminium or aluminum. Yeah, just get in the, the nice goop on the regulator. So we're just putting the braided line down now. We're gonna probably have to angle it down because the throttle body comes out here. Yep. So probably have to run it down. Yep, so I'm going up and over, yep. which will equate to the same distance under and around. So this is the easiest type of hose fitting to do yep. you've got your end cap and you just slide that over here and when i say slide i mean push it really really hard <laughs> twist as well yep you kind of got to screw it down till it goes all the way to the back of the thread there and then you got to hold it in place because when you screw in the other side it's going to want to push the hose out so it's a you got to fight it in and out uh, bit of practice yep. keep an eye on this end to make sure it's not pushing out and not going crooked because uh, you'll see it'll sort of start to push one side 
mm -hmm. and then use your alloy spanner to do that up. It's a bit of stress. Next day now, and that's about all we have time for today's video. Massive, massive thank you to Tristan. Go check his channel out and leave a comment on his latest video saying that I sent you. It's awesome as well because he's an automotive YouTuber and he lives very close to me. So there's going to be definitely more videos with Tristan. We need to go check out his shop because he's got a sick shop in the works and I really want to have a look at some of his projects. To give you guys a quick little update, essentially what we did was create this line right here. Um, it's got the fittings on there, you can see, and that's gonna go from the uh, return line, it's gonna go from the fuel rail to the fuel pressure regulator. We need to make like three more lines and then we can have the front end sorted. PJ also messaged me and said that he's gonna donate some of his uh, fuel rail spaces, which is sick. I'm gonna have to buy some for him. 